Hello. In the last lesson we looked at uh, using a classifier in Weka J48. And in this lesson we're going to look at another of Weka's uh, principal features, filters. One of the main messages of this course is that it's really important when you're doing data mining to get close to your data and to think about pre-processing it or filtering it in some way before applying a classifier. So I'm going to uh, start out by using a filter to remove an attribute from the weather data. Let me uh, start up the Weka Explorer and open the weather data. That's the one. And I'm going to remove, let's remove the humidity attribute. That's attribute number three. So I can uh, look at filters, just like we chose classifier using this choose button on the classify panel. We choose filters by using the choose button here. And uh, there are a lot of different filters, all filter and multi-filter are ways of combining filters. We've got supervised and unsupervised filters. Supervised filters are ones that use the class value for their operation. Um, they're not so common as unsupervised filters, which don't use the class value. And there's attribute filters and instance filters. We want to remove an attribute, so we're looking for an attribute filter. And there's so many filters in Weka that you just have to learn to kind of look around and find what you want. So I'm going to look for removing an attribute. And uh, here we go, remove. Now, as before, when we configured the J48 classifier, we clicked here. So I'm going to click here, and we can configure the filter. This is a filter that removes a range of attributes from the data set. Well, I can specify a range of attributes here. Uh, I just want to remove one. I think it was attribute number three we were going to remove. Uh, I can invert the selection, remove all the other attributes, and leave three. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Click OK, and watch humidity go when we apply the filter. Nothing happens until you apply the filter. And I've just applied it, and here we are. The humidity attribute has been removed. Luckily, I can undo the effect of that and put it back by pressing the undo button. So that's how to remove an attribute. Actually, the bad news is there's a much easier way to remove an attribute. You don't need to use a filter at all. If you just want to remove an attribute, you can select it here and click the Remove button at the bottom. It does the same job. Sorry about that. But anyway, filters are really useful and can do much more complex things than that. So let's, for example, imagine removing not an attribute, but let's remove all instances that where humidity has got the value high. That is, attribute number three has got its first value. That's going to remove seven instances from the data set. There's 14 instances altogether, so we're going to get left with a reduced data set of seven attributes. OK, let's look for a filter to do that. Now, we want to remove instances. So it's going to be an instance filter. And I just have to look down here and see if there's anything suitable. How about remove with values? The remove with values filter. I can uh, click that to configure it. And uh, I can click more to see what it does. And here it says. It uh, filters instances according to the value of an attribute, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to set the attribute index. We want the third attribute, humidity, and the first value. We can remove a number of different values. We'll just remove the first value. Now we've configured that. Nothing happens until we apply the filter. And watch what happens when we apply it. We still have the humidity attribute there, but we have zero elements with high humidity. In fact, the data set has been reduced to only seven instances. Recall that when you do anything here, you can save the results. So we could save that reduced data set if we want to. But I don't want to do that now. So I'm going to undo this. OK. We remove the instances where humidity is high. We have to think about when we're looking for filters, whether we want a supervised or an unsupervised filter, whether we want an attribute filter or an instance filter, and uh, then just kind of use your common sense to look down the list of filters to see which one you want. Sometimes when you filter data, you get much better classification. Here's a really simple example. I'm going to open the glass data set that we saw before. Here's the glass data set. And I'm going to use uh, J48, which we did before. It's a tree classifier. 
uh, where is it? It's J48. I'm going to start that, and I get an accuracy of 66, a little bit over 66%. Okay, now let's remove FE, that is iron. Remove this attribute, and we get a smaller data set. Go and run J48 again. And now we get an accuracy of 67 and a little bit. So we've improved the accuracy a little bit by removing that attribute. Sometimes the effect is pretty dramatic. Actually, in this data set, I'm going to remove everything except for the refractive index and Mg, magnesium. I'm going to remove all of these attributes. Left with a much smaller data set with two attributes. Apply J48 again. And now I've got an even better result, 68, nearly 69% accuracy. And uh, I can uh, visualize that tree, of course, remember, by right-clicking here and visualizing the tree and have a look and see what it means. It's much easier to visualize the tr trees when they're smaller, so this is a good one to look at and consider what the structure of this decision is. So that's it for now. We've looked at filters in Weka. We've looked at supervised versus unsupervised, attribute versus instance filters. To find the right filter, you need to look. They can be very powerful, and judiciously removing attributes can both improve performance and increase comprehensibility. If you like, for some background reading on this, go to the textbook and have a look at section 11.2 on loading and filtering files, and uh, then go and do the activity associated with this lesson. Bye for now.